You're cruising down the road, nice and smooth, and then pothole. Ow. You gotta pick if you want a firm shock or a soft shock or an off-road shock. Wouldn't it be great if there was one type of shock that could do all that? Guess what there is? I'm talking about Magna Ride Suspension. So you might know that most shocks work because of hydraulic dampening. Hydraulic dampening is the use of a fluid, like oil, to impede movement. Most traditional hydraulic shocks work kind of like syringe. A tube attached to the frame depresses a plunger component, which pushes on the oil. The same way, this syringe can't depress if I cover the hole. In order for the shock to move, the oil's gotta have somewhere to go. So there's holes in the shock that let the oil move out of the way. There's two ways to change how quickly this movement of the dampers can occur. So I got two syringes here. These plungers are gonna represent the dampers in your car. The difference is, in a shock, there's holes inside this, so the fluid moves entirely within the shock itself. So one way to affect the dampening characteristics of a shock is by changing the viscosity of the fluid. This is just dish soap. You know how bad how thick that is, right? <laughs> clean that desk off. This is molasses. It's much thicker. It's got much more resistance. Great. So that's one way we can get different behaviors out of the same structures. Another way to change the rate of flow is to use the same fluid, but change the holes through which it flows. This is a fat needle. This is a tiny skinny needle. This one moves much quicker. I gotta work on my grip strength. So it's easy to see how changing the size of the holes in the damper also changes the behavior of the suspension. Traditional socks are white, but traditional shocks are set. So you gotta prioritize. Do you want comfort at the expense of handling and stopping performance, or performance where you're gonna feel every little bump in the road? There's some cars that try to have both sports suspension and cruising comfort by changing the flow of the fluid mechanically. Bilstein developed shocks that will open holes in the dampers to allow less dampening and close them to provide more firmness. There's sensors that detect roll forces and compressive forces from the road. So let's say you're cruising along on a nicely paved road. Well, the dampers are open to absorb all those little bumps. Then, when you turn quickly or brake real fast, the dampers close, restricting the flow of fluid, and this provides firmness, reducing body roll and improving handling. Man, I hate it when there's rocks in my socks. This type of variable mechanical dampening has been available in some pretty rad cars, and it works pretty well. With modern computing and processing, the shocks can change firmness really quickly, but they're still limited by the speed of the mechanical action inside the shock itself. So what if there was a way to instantly change the dampening without relying on mechanical parts? Why not use magnets? Hey, Maggie. That's a good idea, but if you got magnets in there, they're always going to be working. Hey, you talking about my girl? I tell you what, I can go off and on like a switch. Hey, easy there, electromagnet. I'm just making a science show. But he's right. If you can turn a magnet on and off, you can change the characteristics of a magnetized fluid. Electromagnet, we were just talking. See you guys later. <laughs> magnets, how do they work? Oh, but before we get into some of this stuff, make sure you're subscribed. It means a lot to us and it's how we get to bring you new shows. This is where Magnaride comes in. Magnaride was developed by the Delphi Automotive Corporation for GM throughout the 90s. And it debuted on the 2002 and a half Cadillac Seville STS. So how does it work? Magnaride damper fluid is a synthetic damper fluid plus tiny little iron microspheres. When subjected to a magnetic field, the fluid greatly increases its apparent viscosity to the point of becoming a viscoelastic solid. Importantly, the yield stress of the fluid when it's in its active state can be controlled precisely by varying the magnetic field intensity. In each of the monotube dampers is a piston containing two electromagnetic coils and two small fluid passages through the piston. It used to be one coil, but we'll get to that in a minute. When a current is sent through the electromagnet, it creates a magnetic charge of varying intensity. And that's how electromagnets work. When the magnets are off, the fluid travels through the passages freely. But when they're on, the iron particles in the fluid create a fibrous structure through the passages, 
in the same direction of the magnetic field. The strength of the bonds between the magnetized iron particles causes the effective viscosity of the fluid to increase, resulting in a stiffer suspension. If the sensors sense any body roll, they communicate the information to the ECU. The ECU will compensate for this by changing the strength of the current to the appropriate dampers instantaneously. To demonstrate how a magnetorheological damper works, We've got these two syringes connected with magnetorheological fluid inside. So you see, when things are moving normally, easy peasy, this is a magnet. We've just created a plug very similar to the way this works in a car suspension. <laughs> no. There's tiny little iron molecules mixed in here. It's not the same proportion as what's in a shock absorber, but let's see how they behave. Look at that. Colby, get over here, look at this. Can I touch it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does it do that? Well, watch the show. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? Thanks, Bart. You got it. Now I gotta wash my hands. All right. Let's dig into that viscoelastic solid thing that I said earlier. Most traditional suspensions use a Newtonian fluid for dampening. A Newtonian fluid is a simple fluid in which the state of stress at any point is proportional to the time rate of strain at that point. When we talk suspension damper fluid, the proportionality factor is viscosity, like the thickness of it. When magnetized, the fluid in a magnetized damper is known as a Bingham plastic. A Bingham plastic is a non-Newtonian fluid exhibiting a yield stress that's got to be exceeded before flow starts. After that, the rate of shear versus shear stress curve is linear. And all that means is that the magnetic coils in the damper aren't totally changing the viscosity of the fluid per se. They're instead turning the fluid into a kind of plug that limits the flow of the dampening. My buddy Adam is always saying that ketchup is a non-Newtonian fluid. The harder you shake it, the firmer it gets. That's why it won't come out. I swear to God, Adam can't get through breakfast without him talking about it. I get it. The first two generations of Magnaride were great. They didn't have any of the difficulties of mechanical internal parts that could fail, and they didn't have to deal with the lag time of those same mechanical parts when the dampers closed or opened. But with the single magnetic coil, there was a small delay from when the ECU turned off the current to when the damper lost its magnetic field. This was caused by a temporary electric current or an eddy current from the electromagnet. Eddy currents, also called Foucault currents, are loops of electrical current induced with conductors by a changing magnetic field. These currents hung around a bit and slowed the off action of the damper. The third generation of Magnaride introduced a second electromagnetic coil in the piston of each damper. These two coils are wound in opposite directions from each other so that the eddy currents cancel out. The dual coil system effectively eliminated the delay, causing an even quicker responding suspension system. BWI also redesigned the ECU in the third generation. The new and improved ECUs got three times the computing capacity as the previous edition, as well as 10 times more memory. It's also got greater tunability. The car's got track modes, street modes, and sport modes, and that means the ECU is giving different outputs in each mode based on the same inputs. So now, it's not just like you got firm shocks and soft shocks like in the early days, but you got like a million different shocks in one. That's Magnaride Suspensions. Make sure you're subscribed. It means a lot to us, and it's how we get to bring you new shows. And thanks to Squarespace for partnering with us on this episode. Whether you need a domain, a website, or an online store, you can make it with Squarespace. Guys, check this out. They have an all-in-one platform. You don't have to install anything on your computer, even. They even have 24-7 customer service. Hmm. But I already have a website, Bart. Well, Squarespace makes it easy to transfer your existing domain so you don't have to give up tinyhorsesaren'tponies.com. You can just move it on over to Squarespace and make it even better. You can also use Squarespace to sell products online.
and manage your inventory easily. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash science garage to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash science garage. Go get a website, you morons. Support Squarespace, because Squarespace supports us. If you make a website with Squarespace, let me know what it is. I want to see it. Click on this little button to subscribe. Helps us create new shows and make great new content. We got new stuff coming out every day of the week. Check out a new Miracle Whip with Byron. Check out this new wheelhouse. I think it's pretty cool how stuff happens. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram, at Donut Media. Follow me, at Bidsbardo. Go to shop.donut.media to get some cool shirts, get some cool stickers. Don't tell my wife I used up all the molasses and dish soap.